Hello, my dear Facebook friends. How are you? This is Father Jose coming to you from All Saints Parish here in Bay City. Thank you for joining me in this reflection for the Sunday of Pentecost. I hope you all had a wonderful celebration and perhaps you wore red in church today. A lot of people was were wearing red and that was pretty awesome to see. Hey, Steve, how are you? Good to see you, my fellow brother. Jeffrey, how are you? Say hi to little John Paul. Hi, Annette. How is it going? Hello, Nicholas. How are you? Good to see you. Thank you for joining me in this reflection today. I was supposed to actually have this reflection with Father Andy Booms, but Father Andy is quite busy today. He has an event in his parish, and so... Um, he is uh, busy so he can't get away if he comes in and joins that'll be great but if not it's okay yesterday actually Father Andy and I were celebrating 12 years of faithful service that's a running joke between the two of us uh, 12 years of uh, ministry in the priesthood you know when he was at St. James 12 years ago when he celebrated four months of, of priesthood they put an ad in the paper for him saying happy anniversary for four months of faithful service and we're like come on it's just four months well now it is 12 years so i just can't believe it like i said to some of my parishioners uh can't believe it it's been 12 years already and i still feel in my 20s right and so people say nothing wrong with that father <laughs> Anyway, so, well, um, and during this reflection, I pray for my fellow brother, Father Andy. He has enriched my life in so many ways with his ministry, with his priesthood, his example. And he has challenged me, especially uh, on the journey to holiness. And uh, he has helped me a lot, a lot. And I am grateful for his friendship. So, hello, Barb. Hello, Anne Marie. Hello, Tisha. Hello, Sandy. Hello everyone who's joining. All right. So I'm going to start with the prayer. Um, this is the prayer that we uh, prayed at Mass. All of you, when you went to church today, this is the prayer that was said everywhere in the world. Isn't that amazing? In many languages, of course. But this is the uh, English translation. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And this is from the Roman Missal. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And I'm going to pray also the uh, preface. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestow the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. All right. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. So if you were read to church today, make sure you write it in the comments. Um, I am going to read the first reading, which is the most common reading. Everybody knows this reading is the story of the actual event of Pentecost according to the Acts of the Apostles. So this is Acts chapter 2. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together, and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong dri driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, 
which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. And at this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, Arabs, and yet we hear them speaking our own tongues of the mighty acts of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. So, as you as you heard, this passage from um, the Acts of the Apostles is the one that we know the most. This is the story of Pentecost. Sorry, I'm a little dry. And so, there is a, a map. I came up with a map, uh, I think a couple years ago, I showed this map to my parishioners. This is the map from the Acts of the Apostles. I don't know if you'll, you'll be able to see it. You probably see it backwards, which is okay. But this is the list of all the places that people were coming from. They were coming from many, many places, and they all gathered in Jerusalem, uh, most likely for a festival, okay? So clearly, all the people that came, they spoke many different languages. Now, of course, in, in Jerusalem, you would have some unifying languages. I'm sure it was spoken Latin. It was spoken Greek, which was kind of the modern day English for us. Uh, Aramaic. Um, they were more like unifying for, for, for the people. Um, and Hebrew, of course, if they were liturgically oriented and they were Jewish, and if they were coming from the diaspora, most likely they were able to communicate in some kind of uh, uh, biblical Hebrew. But for the most part, all these people are coming from everywhere. So they are speaking all kinds of dialects, all kinds of languages. You know, I, something that I experienced um, that really opened my mind to, to, to realize that people truly speak in many forms in other countries, which is very foreign to us here in America, okay? Because like here in the United States, we, 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 the unifying language is English, for example. And then if you go down south, all Central America, all South America is all one language, which is Spanish. Of course, there are small dialects, like in Peru, there is Quechua, there is also Aymara, but it's very small, very small numbers. But when I went to Italy and I lived in Italy, I realized that pretty much every small area of Italy, they have their own dialect, They're, they have their own language. This language that we call Italian, it's really the imposition of the language of the Florentines that was enforced to the entire Italian peninsula. But to really talk about an Italian language, it, it's really a, uh, a fantasy because each region has their own local languages. And, and I heard several uh, confessions in dialect. I was speaking, expecting people to speak in Italian and they were speaking in dialect and I couldn't understand anything. So, because it all goes back to the time in which there were small kingdoms and the small feudal systems. And so each, each, each area had developed their own language. So this is, that's an, a, a, a more or less medieval example of Italy. But if you look at the map of the Acts of the Apostles, what you really see is that they are, they are Jewish people from everywhere and they're speaking many, many languages. All right. Uh, so you can only wonder, how do they understand each other, you know, in, um, in, in Jerusalem? Anyways, um, I, during the Spanish Mass that we have in our parish, our Mass is quasi-Spanish, it's bilingual really. We have a second reading in English, the Gospel is in both languages, the homily is in both languages. 
and I call the kids because all these little kids they are bilingual they they speak both English and Spanish they speak more English than Spanish but but if they were to invest themselves to study a little bit of uh, of their time to study Spanish they will master it in no time because it's, it's, it's in their blood you know and so I was telling the kids that how they are little Pentecost because they are able to have that gift that many people don't have and for, for, for many any reason you know so we're talking about that and you know the kids are always cute and it doesn't matter the language in which you speak to the kids their attention spam is always as small as father Andy's attention span I, I just I just know that but anyways there is one detail of today's first reading that really got my attention and that is what motivated me for this reflection being titled understanding and confusion okay confusion and understanding remember that the the story of the holy spirit coming of pentecost is radically opposed to the experience of babel the tower of babel you know that story from the old testament so it is when men wanted to be like god and so they wanted to reach to heaven through this tower and God confused them by the many languages of the world. They were not able to understand each other. So, so Babel really, really uh, uh, embodies confusion, while Pentecost symbolizes understanding because everybody can understand the language um, because the, the apostles are preaching and everybody is able to understand no matter where they're coming from. Okay? But there is this little detail in the Acts of the Apostles that puzzled me, and I'm going to read it now. So then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest in each one of the disciples, the apostles. And as they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they all gathered in a large crowd. But they were confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. All right? This is just a little sentence. So, they were confused because they were able to understand. When I read that, I was like, wait a minute. If they were able to understand, why are they confused? Confusion should be over because they are able to understand. And this is the point. Is that when you live in a world of confusion confusion becomes the norm that when you finally are able to understand you're confused by that because you have gotten used to the confusion and it just clicked in my heart that that's exactly how sin operates in our lives this is exactly the strategy of the devil the strategy of the devil is confusion so that we get used to it and so that we live in that confusion and in such a way, that confusion becomes the normal. That when finally, through the Holy Spirit, understanding comes, that confuses us. Because we are so used to the confusion. See the point? I'm going to give you another example. Um, you know that I had surgery in my foot. I've been struggling with this thing for a year and a half. And seriously, I got used to the pain. And anyone who suffers from chronic pain can understand something like that. You just get used to it. Then I had the surgery. And as soon as the surgery was over, and the little crater that was in my, in my foot was pulled out, there was no longer pain. And I was confused by that. Because I had forgotten what it was to be living without pain. In other words, when you live it constantly in pain, that that is not the normal becomes the normal. So that when really the normal comes, which is living in no pain, that confuses us. <laughs> you see the point? It's, it's, it's the weirdest thing. And I just kept telling everyone, you know, this is the weirdest thing. I have no pain. And that should be actually the normal, right? But because I had so gotten used to the pain. So, sin 
truly, seeing truly, makes us live in misunderstanding, in confusion, and makes us to get used to it. Seeing makes us dwell in pain and remain in it. And I am not talking about physical pain now. Because sin ultimately wants our distraction so that the confusion can become the normal. This morning I was preaching to the young kids at our parish that graduated uh, uh, from, from high school. And I was telling them, you know, there, there is a lot of confusing stuff out there. And they must be confused about many things. And when they go to college, they're going to be confused even farther. We are confusing everything nowadays. We are confusing, for example, when life begins. It's clear that life begins at conception. But we have so much information and so much confusion about it. We have so much confusion even after, uh, of our own sexuality. We are confused about relationships. What should be a true relationship in the Lord? We are confused about so many things. And, and, and even, for example, in the politics of this country, we are confused to what? To be on, the, on each other's throats all the time. That's the normal. The normal is to be in misunderstanding. That when understanding comes, we are like, what? We're actually understanding one another? That should be the normal. But sin makes us used to be used to the confusion. And what happens when we get used to the pain? We numb the pain. And we know that numbing the pain does not take the pain away. It simply is an analgesic, something that will just numb it. So many people numb their pain because they are in a, an unfruitful relationship or they are in a toxic relationship and they get so used to it that that becomes the normal for them. Huh? And so they numb the pain with alcohol, with drugs, with more toxicity in their relationship. And that becomes the normal. When the Holy Spirit comes, He sets us free from all of that and we get a new normal. But that new normal, that should be the normal, Unfortunately, because of sin, we are blinded to it and we get confused. Just like all these people at the moment of Pentecost, when they should have been rejoicing at the fact that they were able to understand, they were confused by the capacity of being able to understand. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know what confuses you, what confuses your heart, but I can tell you many things have confused my heart in the past. I, uh, you know, You know that I have gone through this health journey in the past year and I can tell you I I have just barely moved from extreme obesity obesity to it's not even overweight it's obesity from extreme obesity to obesity and extreme obesity had become for me the normal and you get used to it and you you get used to the pain in your knees and in your ankles and everywhere and that shouldn't be the normal and that's when, when it really clicked in my heart that I needed to make some changes in my life so that I can be a better steward for the people that God has entrusted me. But, but that change is, is not easy, I can tell you that. But it's sad. I mean, as I look back, I think, how, how was I able to let that become my normal? And, and that's the strategy of the devil. The strategy of the devil is to bring confusion and, and makes us to be comfortable with that and to get used to it and to live with it and say, well, I guess that's the way I'm going to be for the rest of my life. That's the anti-Pentecost. The Holy Spirit, on the contrary, instead of that confusion, wants to bring to us freedom and truth and understanding. But we need to step up to the plate and realize that we have to make changes and to try to convey a new normal in our lives and never, never settle for less than that. Um, we were looking at some pictures with Father Andy the other day. Uh, holy cow. I mean, the man was like, and now he's able to run marathons. Something that 
if you ask him, for example, two years ago, if he was able to do something like that, he will be like, ah, are you kidding me? I will never do something like that. Because it becomes your normal. But then when the Holy Spirit begins to make changes in you, you relearn what the normal should be. So as we celebrate Pentecost today, if there is some new normal that you need to embrace and confusion that has become your normal that you need to let go, make that happen as we celebrate the gifts of the Holy Spirit being poured out upon you. The Holy Spirit is with you, has always been through your baptism, through your confirmation, is present in every single Eucharist when we call upon the Spirit over those gifts of bread and wine so that they may become the body and blood of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is with you. Now is the time for us to respond to that and to embrace a new normal that the Holy Spirit truly wants to give us. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.